I'm Kerry Stagmer, and we are the blacksmiths of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite things and fantastic objects you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. So here we are back at Man at Arms making the most requested item we have on the channel. We're going to be making Gideon, the giant hammer from Seven Deadly Sins. This is a massive hammer. Obviously, if we went full size, there, there'd be no way to lift it or really even make it in the shop. So we've scaled it down to man size, but it is still massive. We'll get started on the plasma and then we'll be able to go and show a bunch more things. We'll do some forging too, because we know it's not Man at Arms unless we forge something. Now we're ready to start deburring our parts for our Seven Deadly Sins build, then we can assemble it. Now we're ready to start assembling the center section of our Seven Deadly Sins build. As you can see, we're starting to build a box out of all these little components. The reason we're making it hollow is because steel weighs approximately 400 pounds a cubic foot, which is about where we are. This thing would be unwieldable. You wouldn't be able to pick it up. The original is about 30 feet tall, I understand, so we're making ours the height of the average woman, which is about five and a half feet. So as you saw, John put this box together that's going to be the center of the hammer, and I'm sure as he explained, it would be incredibly heavy, basically impossible to lift. It's still really heavy, and it's hot, and it's got lots of welds that have to be ground. So I'm just going to jump right in and get to it. It's going to take a while to get clean. Now that the center section of our hammer is welded up and the corners are blended, we're going to assemble the back spike. Here, I'm taking the overlay and putting it in on the base. Then we'll weld the perimeter. Then they can sand it off.
John just finished uh, welding these two pieces together. Now we gotta pretty them up, make them nice and smooth. So we're ready for the next piece to go on and we'll get started on that right away. I told you we'd figure some way to get some forging in. Well, since we're building this backspike out of sheet metal, I mean, it's thick, it's, it's over a quarter inch thick, um, but it's just not the kind of thing that'll take some damage. So we're gonna be able to have Derek take some hot metal, some 1045 like we used to do some of our larger swords. He's gonna first take this big piece of round stock and make it square or rectangle shape. And that's a preform for him to begin drawing down a point that point will then replace the point in the sheet metal section and that will give us something that can take some damage. Derek's just measuring this to make sure that we have enough material. We don't want to undersize this because then there'll be no way to blend it into the spike when we weld it all together. He'll leave it a little bit thicker, we'll grind it right on the money and put this together. Decker now steps in to hold this material. He holds it in a large set of tongs so that Derek can come in and begin doing the forging by hand. He's still using a pretty big hammer because it's a pretty big piece of material, but that's going to let them work and create this form a little bit closer and a little bit faster than they would do on the power hammer. One of the things that happens when you have a team or a striking team when you're blacksmithing is you really can't hear what's going on. And so the smiths have to have some way to communicate. There'll be some body language, there'll be some hand signals, uh, but in general, just working with that team, you learn each other's cues and it allows you to continue working even when you can't necessarily give uh, verbal orders or requests to your teammates. We go back into John's room and Kevin will be helping John to, to get these spike sections in place so that he can weld them up. Uh, they'll get tack welded at first and, and they're welded to that center section, but after the pieces are welded, he'll cut them off of that center section so that we have a way we can, we can still carry this thing around. We'll then get the spike blended up and put it back in permanently.
bored a hole through the center of these large sections of aluminum, but I've made a couple of steel plugs up. The reason for that is so that I can do what we call turning on centers, which allows us to be farther out from the chuck because the teeth on the chuck that hold material uh, will be in my way if I try and cut uh, both directions on this form. So by pushing it out farther forward, I'll be able to spin it on these center sections and that will let me be able to cut the entire form in one set of passes instead of trying to figure out how to hold it and flipping it over. We have developed a technique where we use the screw presses to create a lot of force. Um, it, it looks like what Rick is doing is, is uh, you know, fairly safe and fairly easy, but the amount of force that the screw press is putting on the back of the chisel is very much like if you were hitting it with a sledgehammer. Uh, so he's, he's got to be a little careful. You may actually catch, if, if you're watching the chisels as he presses them, you may even see them bow slightly, even though they're very substantial pieces of steel. All right, now that we have the main body portion of the hammerhead part assembled, next step is to put the face on top, weld it around, blend it off. John's going to go ahead now and remove the spike section from the back of the sheet metal. Um, we're going to get that end off so that we can weld in the piece that was forged. It was forged fairly close to shape, but a couple of us have uh, kind of worked back and forth getting it cleaned up on the grinders so that it's very close in size. We want to leave it a little proud or a little thick so that when it's welded, we can grind it, blend it in, and then once we have some color on this entire weapon, you really shouldn't be able to see where we put the piece in. All that's left now is to get this thing cleaned up, get the welds all blended, and get some color on the entire weapon. And then Diane's giant hammer, Gideon, has been brought to life and is ready to destroy its enemies. <laughs> All right, what am 
we doing with this now? Click here to subscribe or click here to see more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the team to build. Tell us in the comments below what you would like to see.